everyone, Lou here. In shocking news for Black Butler fans, and for the first time ever for her, Yana Toboso has announced the manga will be on hiatus starting this month onward for an indefinite amount of time. Could be a month, could be quite a few months. So because of that, I think it'd be fun to go over on the series so far and where it could go from here. <laughs> So quick thing before I continue on with this video, but to everyone's complete astonishment and just every Black Butler fan had their jaws dropped to the floor, Cloverworks announced that they're actually adapting the Green Witch arc, which is one of the most infamous and beloved arcs in all of Black Butler. So uh, let's just say this channel will not be dry of Black Butler content, that's for sure. Uh, I'm also very excited, it comes out next year, so definitely expect me to do a review on it. Just so we're clear, this is the first and only break since Black Butler's creation, so this is all a well-deserved break for Yana since she's been working really hard on both Twisted Wonderland and Black Butler at the same time. I don't know if Yana helps write the story, but she is in charge of all character designs, so I can imagine it's not easy to be the sole character designer for a gacha game and a serialized manga. It's unknown exactly why, but her team says it's to do more research and planning for the final storyline, while others argue it's actually because she injured her wrist. I'm gonna trust her team more on this one, but either way, I hope she has a nice peaceful vacation since all manga could deserve a break from their grueling schedules. Anyway, what I found so interesting is that Translations of the announcement call this CL vs CL or Blue Revenge arc as the final act or beginning of the end for Black Butler. I always thought that this would be the halfway point rather than the beginning of the end, but I guess it makes sense when I think about it harder. At this point, when our CL kills real CL by whatever means, be it paralleling when real CL actually died or drying him to death of blood, he'd have to face off Undertaker. This would mean that if he managed to confront Undertaker, he'd likely spill what happened to the Phantom Hives because it's kind of clear after reading this manga so many times that Undertaker likely knows who or what was involved in the death of the Phantom Hives. In that case, then he could lead CL right to who killed the Phantom Hives, thus heading down the really dark and spiraling finale to Black Butler, which I imagine is going to be pretty gut-wrenching and sad since Yana hinted several times that we're not getting a happy ending. Maybe bittersweet since most believe that maybe real CL's soul is just sitting there in Sebastian's stomach so maybe when Sebastian eats our CL he'll reunite with real CL like Alois does with Luca in season 2 before being obliterated into nothingness with his own twin brother who waited for them to reunite. So like our CL would still be dead and Sebastian gets what he wants, but it's a bittersweet real reunion at the end that I could see. Not my idea, because I have seen people suggest this one online. You know, this kind of actually goes into my first theory of who killed the Phantom Hives. It's very clear that whatever killed everyone on the twins' birthday was supernatural, because if this was an attack by normal people, then the twins would have heard the commotion and ended up dead too. It's kind of weird how Yana emphasizes that the twins slept peacefully for hours without a single noise waking them up while they took a nap. The next is just how quickly it's clear everyone died. The only one to show being put up a struggle was Vincent by the fact that he died shielding Rachel while everyone else was clearly caught off guard without any weapons. It's also just how violent this was with no signs of things like bullet holes or scratches from a knife. Well, beyond Tanaka getting presumably stabbed anyway. Crazy as it sounds, the mansion looked more like if Sebastian had attacked it. I don't think this was the work of another demon though, just because I feel like Yana wants to keep Sebastian's species a mystery to the reader, and likely wants to avoid copying season 2, or rather she'd focus on something else. Kind of following the season 1 parallel theory, I definitely think the queen might be involved. I was telling a friend of mine this a while ago, and it does sound kind of tinfoil hatty, but I think it's very possible that this was all some initiation to the guard dog for the future Earl of Phantom Hive. Just because I think it's really weird that Vincent's mother died when he was still a teenager at around 15, so it makes me think that this might be a weird initiation or ritual to prepare the future guard dog for the brutality of the job. Except. 
something went wrong with whoever the queen sent, be it a demon, reaper, or even an angel. Something went wrong and whoever killed them all went too far and killed everyone instead of just Vincent and Rachel, presumably. Then there's the question of who sold the twins then, but it's very possible it was someone against all this or whoever attacked felt bad that they were going too far and left the children with nothing, so they'd rather just kind of throw the kids in the trash, so to speak. Or had some kind of morals against killing kids. I don't know, but it's super weird that they spared only the twins to be sold on the black market. So to kind of sum this up, the Queen might have killed the Phantom Hives as part of an initiation, but she only wanted Vincent dead to prepare the future guard dog and put them on a path of anger or vengeance for them to be focused in their role. But whoever she hired went too far and killed everybody. Maybe felt bad about it, so just sold the kids off instead of killing them. You know, this kind of rolls into my next theory now. Who is Undertaker to the Phantom Hives? Everyone, including myself, kind of agree that Undertaker might be the twins' real grandfather or some kind of ancestor like Kaname from Vampire Night. People say Claudia and Undertaker might have been lovers too, because if Claudia were his daughter, then we'd be going further back and he'd also try to resurrect her mother too instead of just her grandsons. Honestly, I feel like Undertaker wants to resurrect Claudia too, but he's too late as she's just a skeleton by now because his experiments took a very long time to complete, and we know he absolutely would revive Vincent if he wasn't burned to ash when the mansion burned down in the attack. It would explain why our CL can see new reapers without being close to death, and it's stated by Sasha and Ludger in the Green Witch arc that it isn't from his demonic contract, but specifically specifically his lineage. I mean, Reapers can also turn on and off when they want someone to see them, as seen with Ronald, Grell, and Undertaker, but in this case, Sasha and Ludger clearly turned off their visibility, but our CL could still see them. Then you kind of have to wonder if Vincent knew that Undertaker was his father, grandpappy, or ancestor, but probably not since we know he largely treated him as a stranger than someone he recognized as a father or fatherly figure. If Undertaker isn't biologically related, then it's possible what Sasha meant by his lineage is just that the Phantom Hives are always so close to death because of their job that it's possible it's morphed into them seeing Reapers at all times when they don't want to be seen. Because remember that Undertaker doesn't just have Claudia on his locket. He has quite a few other people that clearly meant something to him. It's possible that if Claudia wasn't his lover and instead a friend he had maybe unrequited feelings for, then he just wants to resurrect all his friends. That sounds kind of unsettling to me when bizarre dolls are largely empty husks of who they used to be, like how Freckles or doll died feeling betrayed so now her anger has gone up to 100% because that's all that was left in her body. If anything, this just kind of reminds me of Salad Fingers when he had like those finger puppets of what I assume were his past friends. I don't know, but you gotta admit the salad finger vibes are there with Undertaker. Yeah, so that's pretty much my theory. Undertaker is a grandpappy, and if not, then he's a guy who just wants to make all his friends come back to life, despite the fact that they'd be hollow shells of what they used to be. Now to go over some theories I think will be impossible, unlikely, or kind of dumb. Undertaker did revive Vincent after all. No, I don't think Undertaker did at all. He states that Vincent's body was nothing but ash and even cries that he wasn't able to revive him. So no, we know that Undertaker can't revive someone if they're too decayed or nothing but ash. Hence why he hasn't revived Claudia by pulling some kind of Frankenstein project on her. Though to play devil's advocate, he is using the organs and body parts of orphans to repair bodies that are too decayed but Undertaker explicitly states that flesh carries memories of the soul that it housed, so I think it's more like if someone died losing a body part or a part of the body decayed off. Actually, that would swing Black Butler fully into horror for me when the concept of a bizarre doll is already really creepy and uncanny. Polaris is Joker. I highly doubt Undertaker would revive Doll and Joker together. One is that Joker's body was clearly burned to ashes, 
by Sebastian in the basement. Two is that it's kind of redundant to revive Dull and Joker together when I think we just need one reminder of the circus arc rather than half the star's servants being reminders of the circus arc. We know that Dull or Freckles is Canopus, Vegas is Layla and her alter Al, and Sirius is real Ciel. Polaris is the only one unidentified so far in the manga and all we know is that Polaris was previously a servant. But I don't think Polaris is anyone we know. So it's likely something similar to Layla and Al, where we don't know who or what they are. It's possible that Polaris was a dedicated butler to someone else. Otherwise, I think they would have emphasized a servant the twins knew growing up or were close to. Possibly a servant to one of the besties on Undertaker's funeral locket. I just think Joker doesn't make any sense, especially when Joker doesn't really scream servant material beyond his loyalty to serving his foster father, Baron Kelvin. So our CL's name is Sirius. I can see why they're so popular, but I don't personally think Sirius is our CL's name, even if it does make sense in context. The main reason why I don't think so is because it's just too easy? Like, how easy would it be for everyone to put two and two together that Sirius Phantom Hive had a cult instead of being shocked when real Sale points it out. Sirius is related to the twins, but it's more the constellation the twins were born under and a reference to dogs rather than our CL's name. I personally think our CL's name is Estle because I think it fits meaning-wise. CL means sky in French and Estle means star or false star in French as the male equivalent to étoile, while Sirius is a Latin name so I think it makes sense the boys both have French names as opposed to one French and one Latin name. Well yes, twins don't always have to have names or meanings that match, but in popular culture, it's common for twins to have names of the same meaning in the same language. Like in Japanese, although it may not rhyme, Sora and Riku are considered good twin names because they mean sky and sea. Again, this is all just me, and watch that I end up being a huge clown for this, and our CL's name is actually Sirius. Even though I'm gonna be honest that it just makes me think of Sirius Black from Harry Potter. Actually, now that I think about it, we probably won't ever know our CL's name. At least, I personally don't think so. I think it's gonna be like the book and Alfred Hitchcock movie, Rebecca, where we never actually know our CL's name because he lived his life in CL's shadow. That's just me anyway. Now to the final theory I dismiss before I give some final thoughts on Black Butler's current chapter and where it could go from here. CL killed the Phantom Hives. This gives me a no Patrick vibe whenever I see someone talk about this. No internet, a five year old didn't know how to properly poison his identical twin brother with the exact same symptoms of asthma. No internet, a 10 year old didn't go on a killing spree without anyone fighting back or resisting. Real CL summoning a demon doesn't make sense either. We also see he's clearly just as traumatized as our CL, so why would he be equally as traumatized if he did all this? I went on about this in my Bad Black Butler Theory video, so I'm not gonna repeat myself too much, but this theory makes zero sense to me. I just can't see logically how a 10 year old could pull all this off unless Real CL is magically a demon or some shit this whole time, like Tsukasa in Hanako-kun. Going to my final thoughts on Black Butler as of now, I think the Blue Revenge arc, although painfully slow due to Yana's short pages each month, is actually pretty good. Bardroys felt like a bit of a slog to get through until the end, but Mayrin and Finian's had me completely invested actually. Especially Finian's by the gut punches it pulled with Snake's death and the shock at referencing the Promised Neverland surprisingly well. Considering Yana clearly cares about her series, I highly doubt it'll end up like The Promised Neverland. We're left with quite a few plot threads still hanging for now that might be answered in this arc or the upcoming one, and that is, where did Undertaker steal Reaper weapons to give to his bizarre dolls? What's gonna happen when all of Real CL's blood supply runs out? Will the orphans be new servants? And of course, the biggest one to me, will Doll convince Undertaker to turn Snake into a bizarre doll? 
That last one seems the most likely to me, but I don't know if Undertaker will take the risk knowing his blood supply is running low. That and Snake is not 100% human, he seems to be some sort of Gorgon descendant, so I don't 100% know if he can have human blood transfusion. Currently, Ciel and Sebastian were going to be staying at a resort hotel that seems to be referencing first American serial killer H.H. Holmes, where people are likely getting booby-trapped inside and drained of their blood so they never check out. It's every single one of Undertaker's blood supplies for the Bizarre Dolls drains people until they die or take children for parts as seen with the FOL orphanage which is honestly fucking disturbing that I have to wonder if real CL knows about this or if he's kind of a yandere at this point where he doesn't care about anyone but his brother due to how overboard emotions go with Bizarre Dolls. However, Sebastian and CL are thwarted by the hotel's manager, Barnabas Fairchild III, who looks like a Keebler elf. Instead of giving them delicious cookies, he knows Sebastian and CL's identities. Then again, I don't know how the hell they thought they wouldn't go unnoticed with no disguise but I guess they didn't have costumes in their budget. Either that, or we all agree that it would have been smarter to work in the hotel, but I guess it would have been a risk when our CL doesn't even know how to tie his shoes, let alone work as a bellboy. I can see Barnabas going either way in this, either a misguided villain or a good guy who will help CL and Sebastian shut everything down when he realizes that innocent people are being killed. It's hard to trust a guy who looks like one of Santa's elves or on the cover of fucking Candyland. I mean, this is Black Butler, where a character as adorable looking as Layla turned out to be an evil baby. All I'm saying is, don't eat the cookies from this guy because I have a bad feeling he's gonna fuck over Sebastian CL somehow. This arc feels like it's gonna end with the hotel getting blown up, and you know what? I can kind of see that. I know this video was a little, or maybe more, chaotic than my usual videos, but I wanted to kind of just word vomit my thoughts in a video, just because I really wanted to talk about the hiatus and my current thoughts in the manga. You guys let me know down below what you think of where Black Butler's going, and your thoughts on any of these theories. I'm obviously going to still talk about Black Butler even with the school arc done, but like always, I kind of end up stuck on what to talk about, but you guys know me. I always figure it out somehow thanks to the comments and random random ideas at 3 a.m. As always, let me know down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!